hand and turn with me to Genesis chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. We'll also be looking at 1 Corinthians 7, verses 3 and 6. We're picking back up our series today, Divorce Proof Your Marriage. Because, you know, even if you have a good marriage, it can be made better. And even if you have a struggling marriage, it can bring healing and restoration if we follow the principles uh, of God's Word. And we want to help people build healthy, happy, lasting marriages. The Bible says, build your house upon the rock and it will endure even when the storm comes. Amen. And the rock is Jesus' word. So we want to build our house, our life, our families, our marriages on the word of God. So uh, the series is Divorce Proof Your Marriage. And this week's message is titled Women Spell Intimacy, T-A-L-K, T-A-L-K. I read the story of a Colorado man who was on vacation with his family and he drove out of a gas station in Pennsylvania and he continued through West Virginia and part of Ohio without realizing that his wife, the mother of their two children, was still back at the gas station in Pennsylvania. In Ohio, he took a nap and it was 90 minutes later that he awoke and recognized the fact that his wife was no longer in the vehicle. So he drove three states, took a 90 minute nap, and then woke up and realized his wife was not with him. <laughs> At this point, he was in a panic and he turned around and began driving back frantically when he hit a deer. <laughs> the crash damaged his van so he couldn't drive it, so he ended up having to walk several miles to a truck stop where a trucker helped him in getting back to Pennsylvania where his wife was and being reunited with her. As you hear the story, women are probably horrified and men may nervously be laughing and just ever so grateful that this has never happened to them. <laughs> but this incident serves as an analogy for what can happen in some marriages. Unintentionally, husbands, none of the ones here, none listening online, but unintentionally, husbands, you can sometimes leave your wife behind in the area of intimacy. In a study of over 700 couples to uh, determine the top five love needs of husbands and wives, both husbands and wives indicated that the second most important need in marriage is intimacy. Great, they're in agreement. There's only one problem. Husbands think of intimacy in terms of passionate physical experience. That's why last week we preached a message titled, Husbands Spell Intimacy. Oh, some of you get an A, you were listening. Husbands Spell Intimacy, S-E-X. If you missed the message, go back online. It's still archived there and listen to it. And it's particularly directed to wives, amen? And, and, and I caution the husbands not to have said amen too loud, lest they suffer the consequences. But wives, go back and listen. And I didn't spell out an assignment for you, but the title of the sermon does spell out the assignment for you. Men spell intimacy, S-E-X. So ladies, that's your assignment, amen. But guys, when your wife hears the word intimacy, She's in a whole different plane. She thinks about emotional connection and communication. And again, I want to note that I've drawn on the insights and research of Dr. Gary and Barbara uh, Rosberg, who are experts uh, in this area. And so some of their thoughts are reflected uh, in this series. But what I want us to understand is that God designed both aspects of intimacy both the emotional, spiritual connection and communication and the physical connection, God designed both aspects to be central to the marital relationship. Read with me, if you will, Genesis chapter 2, verses 24 through 25. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. The unity or oneness that God intends for marriage includes emotional intimacy, spiritual intimacy, which is then celebrated in physical intimacy. 
And meeting each other's intimacy needs is essential to divorce-proofing your marriage. Another uh, marriage expert, Christian marriage expert named Dr. Gary Chapman in his book, The Five Love Languages. Anybody ever heard that book, The Five Love Languages? If you haven't read it, I encourage you to do so. But he introduces the idea of the fact that every person has what's called a love tank. Every wife has a love tank. Every husband has a love tank. Every person has a love tank. And if you allow your spouse's love tank to get too low, it creates a vacuum. It creates an emptiness, a space for something else or someone else to come in and fill it up. So for husband, his second most important love need is physical intimacy. And as we said in last week's message, if that need is not met, normally what will happen is husbands begin to shut down and withdraw from their marital relationship. And that then, as we read in scripture, gives Satan an opportunity to come in and tempt him to fill that need either with another woman or with uh, pornography. And let me tell you something, that can happen even to Christian men. Don't let the blinders be on your eyes, ladies. That can happen even to Christian men, all right? If their needs are not being met, Satan is going to be right there knocking on their door. And he'll send somebody or an opportunity to fill that need in some way. Now, for women, her second most important love need is also intimacy, but it's emotional intimacy, which involves connection and communication. And if her need for emotional intimacy is not met, guess what? Satan is also knocking on her door and he will send a guy at work that will listen to her, that will pay attention to her. And before you know it, she's having an emotional affair, if not a physical one, because she's sharing with him things that she should be sharing with her husband. That's what an emotional affair is. She's sharing her heart. She's sharing her feelings with another man that's not her husband things that she should be sharing with her husband. When you're not meeting the love needs of your spouse, it places your marriage in danger. So last week, we addressed why about meeting your husband's love need for physical intimacy. And you have an assignment. And it was spelled out in the title of that sermon. Amen? I'm not hearing many amens from you wives, but I'm sure you're saying it inside. Hallelujah. But this week, guys, we're speaking to you about meeting your wife's love needs. Because turnabout is fair play. If we were talking to the wives about what they need to do, now, hey, guys, it's your turn. We got to talk to you about what you need to do. And ladies, I caution you, don't be elbowing your, hus your husband when a point hits home. Because, you know, ladies have all sorts of signals they give to their husbands, you know. It, it, they, they tap them on the shoulder. They'll kick them under the table or something if they're, you know. At, do, don't do any of that because that's going to cause some problems later on. And it may just cause your husband to tune out what's going on because he's getting upset, okay? So ladies, inside, when a point really hits home, say amen real loud inside. <laughs> but not outside, amen? As much as I love to hear amens, I don't want to get you in trouble in your marriage. But when both spouses are committed to meeting each other's needs, you can divorce-proof your marriage. And I want to say that this, this series is for everybody. If you're young or you're divorced and you hope to one day be married, listen up because this can prepare you. A stitch in time saves nine. How many of you know that? Amen. This can prepare you uh, so that you can avoid a lot of problems down the line if God should so bring you someone to be married to. If you're someone who's not married, you're not intending on being married, maybe you, you've been there, done that, and, and it's over with, this can also help equip you to minister to others. Maybe your son, maybe your daughter, maybe your grandchildren, maybe a friend. It can equip you to help understand marriage better and be able to give godly counsel and advice. So whether you're married or not, listen up because there's something in this message for you. And guys, listen up because this message is particularly directed to you. The first thing I want us to see is your wife's greatest need is for emotional intimacy and connection. And what does intimacy or emotional intimacy really mean? The word intimacy, you can remember it this way, it means intimacy. Intimacy. That's what the word intimacy really, in essence, means. It comes from the Latin word that means innermost. 
so that you can see the innermost aspect of a person's being. What, do, what that looks like in marriage is vulnerable sharing of inner thoughts, feelings, your spirit, and your true self. And it's interesting, have you ever noticed that, especially in the King James Version, when the Bible speaks of a husband and wife coming together in the sexual act, what is the word that the King James Version at least uses? No. It'll say like, an Adam knew Eve, or Abraham knew Sarah, and she conceived. Isn't it interesting that the Bible uses the word no to describe physical intimacy or the act of sex? And do you know that the word for no in Hebrew, the original language of the Old Testament, is yada? And it's not speaking of a head knowledge. It's a relational word. It is to complete, be completely known and understood and still loved and respected. In fact, that is one of the words that is used of God knowing us. God yadaz us. He knows us intimately. He knows us deeply. He knows us personally. He knows every thought before we think it, every word before we speak it. He knows our down sitting and up, our upright. He knows everything about it. God yadaz us. You see, yada speaks of true intimacy, about being completely loved and understood and still loved and respected. And isn't that the ultimate goal of a marital relationship? That's true intimacy. And that's what every marriage needs in order to be healthy, happy, and lasting. And guys, the way that you develop intimacy with your wife is by listening, showing empathy, which means that you identify with and understand her feelings, giving her reassurance, and praying with her. Because you know what? Praying together forms a spiritual bond at the deepest level of your being. And that brings a unity in marriage that nothing else can duplicate. And this emotional understanding and connection has to be present before your wife will want to share herself physically with you. Unless a wife feels emotionally connected to you, she will not feel safe to physically connect with you, if you get my gift. She will not feel loved. She will feel that sex is using her to meet your needs. It's awful quiet in here, but that's okay. I told you not to say enough. We also see that your wife will feel like having sex when she feels emotionally close and in harmony with you. 1 Peter 3, 7 says, and, and I'm reading it from the Good News Translation because I think it better conveys the, ma the, the meaning of the verse. It says, in the same way, you husbands must live with your wives with the proper understanding that they are more delicate than you. Treat them with respect. Some versions say they are the weaker vessel, but that has led to an error in thinking that women are somehow weaker, uh, a weaker gender uh, than men. But he's talking about vessels here. So a vessel is a container or a dish. And so what Peter has in mind is something like a fine china dish, okay? A fine china dish it is precious, it's very valuable, and it's also extremely fragile. So it can be broken easily. So when you handle fine china, you don't handle it like you would handle a plastic bowl. See guys, when you're relating with another guy, you can handle it like you would handle a, a, a plastic bowl. Plastic bowl can be dropped, it can be knocked over, it can be thrown, and nothing's gonna happen to it. So you can just talk to another guy and say, hey, why are you doing that? And, 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 and you'll be fine. But you talk to your wife that way, and it's gonna cause a problem because it's gonna break her emotionally. So the Bible says, husbands, you need to live with your wives according to proper understanding. You need to understand that your wife is different than you. She is more emotionally sensitive, and you need to treat her with care and with attention. A lot of misunderstanding and frustration happens when you think your wife views intimacy the same way that you do, when you think your wife views communication the same way that you view it. For instance, guys, you may have a disagreement with your wife at dinner, and an hour later it's bedtime, and you're ready. Because remember we talked about men having a box that's always open that's labeled what? 
S-E-X. He has other boxes he can compartmentalize, so he compartmentalized that argument and he closed that box, but the sex box is always open. Go back and listen to last week's message because it's very true. So they had a blowout at dinner, an hour later it's bedtime and his box is open. But guess what? She wants nothing to do with him. Because emotionally, she's hurt, she's not feeling connected, she's not feeling that unity, she's not feeling in harmony with you. I love the way one writer expressed it. She writes, for women, emotional intimacy is like a cake and physical intimacy is the icing on the cake. There is no point of icing if there is no cake. Did y'all get that? Emotional intimacy is like the cake. Physical intimacy is the icing on the cake. But there's no point of icing if there's no cake. There's no point of sex if there's no emotional intimacy. I read the story of a couple named Ken and Debbie. Ken was a pilot. He'd been away on a trip and he was eager to get home. He wanted to unwind a little bit. He was eager to see his wife. He wanted to have sex with his wife. And then he wanted to watch some TV before dinner. But all day long, Debbie had been chasing children, picking up after them, talking about a purple creature named Barney. Uh, and Ken's mother had just called that she was coming to spend a week with them. You know, when your mother-in-law's come. I know y'all love your mother-in-law, amen? <laughs> So by the time Ken walked through the door, she was fit to be tied. And Ken walked through the door. He is so excited to see his wife. And he just gave her that flirtatious look. Because his box was open. And the minute she saw that look, she said, no, not today. And she stormed out of the kitchen and sat down on the couch the first time she had sat alone all day. Ken's flirtatious look was the straw that broke the camel's back. Initially, Ken was, was, was momentarily deflated and he sighed out of disappointment that he was not gonna get what he wanted. But instead of getting upset, Ken went and sat beside his wife gently put his arm around her and said, honey, tell me about your day. I know that's how all the guys here were going to respond, amen? <laughs> you, you were not going to get upset and say, you never want anything to do with me, you're always... No, you were going to respond just the way this man did, amen? I know it, by faith, I know it, praise God. And, and, and so uh, Debbie began to cry and she told him, I never dreamed that raising kids would be so difficult. And she began to pour out everything that she was feeling. And what Debbie needed at that moment from Ken was the safety of being able to unload all of her stress that had been building up all day long. And Ken understood what she needed at that moment. What she needed was connection with him. What she needed was a listening ear, not to try to fix her problem. Not to tell her, if you'd only get on a schedule, and if you would, no, because that is, you're not getting sex for a month, guys, if you respond that way. She just wants you to listen and support her and understand her and comfort her. And so Ken listened and he empathized and when she was done pouring her heart out, he told her, honey, I understand. Just sit there and rest. And he went in the kitchen and he loaded the dishwasher. He cleaned up the kitchen. And then he took the kids out to shoot some hoops so she could have some alone time. And after dinner, he continued to show her tenderness, asking her, how are you feeling now? And, and if there was anything else he could do for her to make her feel better. And he said, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you and everything you do for our kids and our family. I know that's how all the guys here are going to respond. Amen. That's how you've been responding. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, and so... Uh, after dinner, he asked her those questions. He gave her some more support and appreciation. And tired from the day, he sat down uh, in the living room and he watched some TV. And then he went upstairs expecting that he was just going to go to sleep. But when he opened the bedroom door, he was surprised to be greeted by the soft glow of candlelight, some romantic music, and Debbie smiling at him from the bed. 
And she said, the night is still young, Ken. <laughs> and Ken wasn't tired anymore. <laughs> Guys, if you meet her need, you're going to be one happy husband. Amen? Yeah. Guys, you could say amen there. I, I, I encourage you to do that. So guys, listen up. Are you paying attention? When your wife's emotional needs are being met, then she will want to connect with you physically. And it's a win-win. Her needs are met. Your needs are met. You can't get anything better than that, amen? But if the emotional intimacy is not there, then the physical intimacy, if you ask for it, is going to make your wife feel as though you're just using her to meet your needs. And when a wife's need for emotional intimacy is not met, she's going to start to withdraw from the marriage. And as a husband, you may start feeling her distance. And see if you haven't heard this conversation before. What's wrong, honey? Nothing. Guys, have you ever heard that conversation? She says nothing. But boy, do you know, something is wrong. And when that wall goes up, guys, don't start arguing with her. Stand in front of the mirror and ask yourself, am I connecting? Am I communicating? Am I listening? Am I understanding? Am I supporting? Am I meeting my wife's emotional needs? Because if that wall remains unaddressed, over time, it is gonna become like the Great Wall of China. And you will end up being two strangers coexisting under the same roof. You're gonna be roommates rather than a married couple. And it will eventually end up in divorce. And none of us want that, amen? We want godly marriages, we want happy marriages, we want lasting marriage. Another indicator that your wife's need for emotional intimacy is not being met is that when you make those advances, she does not respond. And often husbands, they, they interpret their wife's resistance to their advances like rejection. Their ego gets hurt, and so it ends up in an argument. But it's more likely a self-protective mechanism for her. She's not rejecting you, she's protecting herself. And it indicates that she doesn't feel understood, she doesn't feel united with you, she doesn't feel loved, she doesn't feel safe to give herself to you because she doesn't feel cared for or because there's unresolved conflict in the relationship. A third consequence of your wife's unmet need for emotional intimacy is that she may seek the emotional connection from another person, from another man. Not intentionally, but the devil will be there to knock on her door and bring somebody who will listen to her, tell her she's pretty, who, who will spend time with her, who will support her and encourage her. You can divorce-proof your marriage and keep the flames of romance alive by meeting your wife's need for connection and communication. Second principle, meet your wife's need for emotional intimacy is a lifestyle. It's not something you do in the moment because you want to be physically intimate with her. She will know exactly what you're up to if that's what you're doing. Because women are extremely perceptive, amen? So meeting her need must be a sincere expression of your love for her and it must be a lifestyle. Here are some practical ways to ensure that your wife's needs for emotional intimacy are met. Engage in conversation with her every day, not just, you know, uh, did you cook dinner? Uh, did you pay the bills? Not that kind of conversation. How are you doing? How are you feeling? How was your day? Engage in meaningful conversation with her, listening to her and responding to her with empathy. However hard your day might have been, however much stress or pressure, guys, that you were under, save some energy for your wife and come home ready to talk to connect with her and to pay attention to her. Greet her with a warm kiss that lets her know that you are glad to see her. Tell her about your day. And she wants details. 
Women like detail. Did you know that statistics show that for every one word that a man speaks, a woman speaks 10? <laughs> women like detail. So if she says, honey, how was your day? Fine. That's not emotional connection. She wants to hear about your day. She wants to hear about that client you met with or that problem you had with your boss and how it made you feel. So give her some details. Amen? Come home ready to talk. Tell her about your day. If she asks about something, don't give her that one word answer. She wants to hear about you. She wants to hear about how you're feeling. She wants to, to, to hear about your day and then you ask her about her day. And don't get upset when she gives you details. Don't be like, get to the point. Bottom line it for me. No. Because women like details. And she wants you to know the details of her life. Being a best friend, which is what a husband and wife should be, being a best friend and good conversationalist is what a wife considers romantic. Amen? She enjoys your attention. And believe it or not, you enjoy having her attention too. So remember how it was when you first dated and you fell in love? Do you remember how it was back then? You were eager to talk to her. Sometimes you would sit for hours chit-chatting and just staring into her eyes. You remember that? If you can remember back that far, amen. You were eager to talk to her. You wanted to find out everything about her. You would call her in the middle of the day just because you were thinking about her and you wanted to hear her voice. Maybe you would even drop by her work at lunchtime for an impromptu lunch day. Do you remember when you used to do those things? And when you were together, do you remember how conversation just flowed and the two of you could talk forever and time just seemed to fly by and it was easy because your hearts were connecting all the time and that is the key to emotional intimacy. You got to do, guys, what you did while you were dating to win her heart. You got to keep doing it through the marriage to keep her heart. Try it. Wake up one morning and give your wife a big kiss, not wanting anything else, and just tell her, you don't even know how much I love you, honey. She may have a heart attack, but boy, she's going to be happy. <laughs> just out of the blue. Call her in the middle of the day and tell her, you know, I've had you on my mind all morning. I can't stop thinking about you. I love you so much. Oh, she may drop the phone. She may be so shocked. <laughs> When you come home, kiss her. Ask her how her day was. Listen to the details. Amen? Start doing it every day. And you will be amazed at how your marriage will change. Oh, but pastor, you don't know what condition our marriage is in right now. And what you described earlier, strangers in the same house, that's where we are. Start small. Send her a text in the middle of the day and tell her, hey, I appreciate so much how you take care of our kids. I appreciate so much how you do that. Start small, and it'll begin to put some cracks in the wall, and then build up. Amen? But you got to start. Somebody's got to start somewhere if you're going to turn this ship around. Amen? So guys are generally the initiators, as God has created them to be. So guys, start. Secondly, em em empathetically listen to your wife. Really listen. And I said it before, don't listen to try to present a solution and fix her problem. She probably already knows what answers need to be done in her situation. She just wants somebody to listen and understand and support her. So what is she telling you? Listen to what she's saying. Is she making the same comments over and over about your relationship, about your marriage? Are you arguing about the same things over and over? Pay attention because these things that keep re-emerging, they are unresolved issues that are intimacy killers. Right now, think and ask yourself, are there unresolved issues in our marriage? And what comes to your mind? When you get home, ask your wife, is she aware of any unresolved issues in your marriage? And if she says no, no don't just sigh a, a, a sigh of relief and drop the ball and say, great, I'm safe. Ask questions about how she's feeling about your marriage. 
Honey, are you satisfied in your marriage? Are you happy in our marriage? Do you feel that we are connected emotionally? Ask her what she feels you could be doing better to make your marriage healthier. Ooh, it's awful quiet in here. And when she answers, listen, don't debate. Listen, pay attention to it. Take the truth that's in it and try to make change. Thirdly, express understanding. Be careful to not be judgmental with your wife and make her feel silly or ashamed about what she's feeling because sometimes we can demean a person's feelings. Don't tell her things like, oh, you shouldn't be feeling that. Oh, you know, you, you, you are too sensitive. Oh, you worry too much. Or if she shares her dreams with you, don't tell her, that's imp- that'll never work out. That's foolish. Instead, you know, if she's worried about something, tell her, honey, I know that you're facing a lot right now, but let's talk through it. How can I help you? And together, we'll get through whatever it is. Just spending a few moments talking with your wife every day will give her a tremendous sense of relief and it tells her that you really care about her and you respect how she's feeling. Fourthly, express affection and attention. Has your wife ever said, you're not paying enough attention to our marriage? Or you are working too much? Or you're not home enough? What she's really saying is, I'm feeling emotionally disconnected from you. I miss you, and you are not paying enough attention to me and to our marriage. And the way that she craves attention is the tender, not the sexual, touch and affection. Give her a kiss and a hug when you leave in the morning and when you come home. Sit next to her on the couch. Put your arm around her or hold uh, her hand or just snuggle next to her and watch a movie together with her with no intention of going any further. Give her a long-stemmed rose just by surprise and tell her how much you love her. Spend time alone together regularly. Take, surprise her. Take her out to dinner. Take her on a walk at the beach, whatever it is, but spend time alone together with her and speak tender words to her. Tell her frequently, I love you, you are beautiful, you mean the world to me, you're such a wonderful cook, you're such a wonderful mother, you have such a big heart, you're such a giving person. Speak all of those things to her. What wife wouldn't respond to a husband who shows such affection and attention in these ways? She will want to be with you. Husbands, I encourage you to build walls of protection not between you and your wife, but around your marriage by committing yourself to meet her needs for emotional intimacy and communication. If you do that, your wife will flourish, your relationship will thrive as she moves closer to you both emotionally and physically. And who wouldn't want that kind of marriage? Husbands, with God's help and your commitment, You can help make your marriage what God desires it to be by committing to meet your wife's need for emotional intimacy. And the first and most important step to a healthy, happy, lasting marriage is making God the center of your marriage. And that starts by giving your heart to Christ. You see, we need God's help to make marriage what he intended to be. He is the the creator of marriage. And he's the one who can help us to realize his plan for the blessing of Mary. But sin has disconnected us from God. It has separated us from God. That's the whole reason that Jesus had to come from heaven to earth. And he died on the cross for us. He lived a sinless life and offered his life as a sacrifice for our sins. So that when we repent of our sins, which means to turn away from, we recognize we've been headed in the wrong direction. And we make a U-turn and say, God, forgive me. And we turn to God in faith and we invite him into our life. At the moment that we do that, then the Bible says we become born again. We are made new and we are brought into relationship with God. And he comes to live inside of us and to help us from that time forward to live the life that he's calling us to live. If you have not yet repented of your sins and placed your faith in Jesus, or maybe you did so several years ago and you've drifted away and you know that you need to come back, I want to ask you to pray this prayer of repentance and faith with me to invite Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me, dear Jesus? I believe that you are the Son of God, and I believe that you love me 
so much that you died for my sins. Today, I repent. I turn around. I confess that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, and I invite you to come live inside of me. Help me from this day forth to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer uh, for the first time or the first time in a long time, I want to congratulate you on making the best decision of your life, and I want to welcome you to the family of God. I want to encourage you right now, if you prayed that prayer, if you're in-house, to text I prayed to the number on the screen or online, you can type I prayed in the comments. We want to send you a free e-booklet that will help you understand the prayer that you just prayed and the next steps that you need to take to keep growing in your relationship with the Lord because that prayer was a beginning, not an ending. And just three quick steps to help you along your way. Number one, talk to God every day. He's our Father. He wants to hear from us. He wants to help us. And he wants to be an integral part of our life. And that's called prayer. So talk to God every day. Start with Thanksgiving. The Bible says Thanksgiving brings us into the presence of God. Thank him for all the good things in your life, for health, for strength, for family, for loved ones, for a job, for a provision. Begin by Thanksgiving and then talk to him about everything that's going on in your life. Problems in your marriage, problems at work, decisions that you need to make, things that you're feeling. Talk to him about it all. He wants to hear from you. And then secondly, let God talk to you. And the number one way he talks to you is through the Bible. That's his word, his message to us. If you don't have a printed version of the Bible, you can download the version app on your phone or your tablet and read the Bible for free. The app is free. You can read the Bible there. And I encourage you to start in First John. It tells us who Jesus is and what he's done for us to save us from our sins. And just read a few verses every day before you read. Ask God to help you to understand what it means and what he's saying to you. And then thirdly, get connected to a local Assembly of God church where you can continue to be taught and grow in your relationship with the Lord. Here in South Florida, of course, we want to invite you to come and be a part of new life. If you're out of the area, we encourage you to find an Assembly of God church near to you and get connected there. But once again, welcome to the family of God and congratulations on making the best decision of your life. As we close out, I want to talk to us that have already accepted Jesus Christ. You know, God created us as relational beings. And marriage is about companionship. It's about emotional connection and communication, a oneness that is then expressed in physical intimacy. For marriages that are struggling in the area of emotional intimacy, or you just need to go to another level to make it better, I want you to pray that God will help you, especially as husbands, to be more attentive to the emotional needs of your spouse, and that you, husbands, will commit yourself to build that emotional connection and improve communication in your marriage. I'm not going to ask you to stand, but husbands, you know who you are. Would you pray right where you are for God's help to better meet the emotional needs of your wife and build a stronger bond of emotional and spiritual connection and intimacy? wives, you're sitting with your husband or your husband. You pray for them, but pray for them quietly right now that God would touch their heart. Would you pray with me? Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all of the husbands that are here present today and those that are tuning in online. I thank you that they love you. I thank you that they want to live a life that is pleasing and honoring to you. And that includes honoring you in their marriage. And so, Father, I pray that as they've heard your word today, Lord God, that they would not soon forget it, but that they would become not just a hearer of your word, but a doer of your word, Lord God. And that they would commit to take the principles that they've learned today and put them into practice to build a healthier, stronger, and closer marriage. Father, I pray that you would give them wisdom and understanding. I pray that you would touch their heart and give them a tenderness and a sensitivity towards your wife. And I pray for every marriage in this church that you would just bring husbands and wives closer together in the intimacy that you intend for marriage. We commit them into your hands, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand to your feet and let's close out with a song of worship. Jesus in the center of Jesus at the 
marriage in this church, Lord God, because you are what matters, Lord. Father, we pray that your word and your spirit would continue to minister to our hearts even as we leave from this place. We pray, Lord God, that you would just bless your people with a day of rest and refreshment, Lord God, and that your covering protection would be over each and every one of them. Keep them safe and healthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Guys, you have an assignment for this week. Remember, wives spell intimacy, T-A-L-K. So I want you to have a conversation with your wife every day this week. Not about, did you feed the kids? Did you mow the lawn? Did you pay the bills? How are you feeling? How was your day? Really listen and show her affection and attention and appreciation. Amen. That's your assignment. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us, those online. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you all for coming today. And we do hope.